Hi, it's Dwyer. Saturday morning, November the 17th, 2018. Free site, gamblersadvisory.com. Free site, bettingangle.us. Let's talk about Adrian Broner's challenge of Manny Pacquiao. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I know I'm gonna get in trouble in this video. I know I'm gonna say some hard things. Let the chips fall where they may, right? Adrian Broner's last three fights. A split decision victory over Adrian Granados, right? Split decision. His next fight, a loss, a unanimous decision loss against Mikey Garcia. His last fight, a draw against Jesse Vargas. In my opinion, the sun is setting on Adrian Broner. I think this fight is a mismatch. I'm expecting Manny Pacquiao to win big, to win decisively. Now, it's only because Manny Pacquiao is the kind of guy who sometimes when he's blowing out an opponent, right, when he's knocked an opponent down, think Chris Algieri, think Shane Mosley, knocked Mosley down early, right? It's only because Manny Pacquiao at times looking at a guy who he's knocked down then decides, I'm going to be compassionate here. I'm going to allow this guy to get off the canvas. I'm going to entertain the fans for a few rounds. If this guy's courageous, he could even go the distance. It's only because Manny Pacquiao takes his foot off the gas at times that I feel that Adrian Broner might go the distance in this fight. I know Broner's never been knocked out or stopped in his career. Ooh, I think this is the fight where that could easily happen. I like Manny Pacquiao to win this fight. If Manny was, let's say, Callum Smith, right? a guy who hurts you and who wants to stop you, right? If he were that kind of guy, I would just call this a Manny Pacquiao by stoppage fight. But because Manny's older, has compassion, I'm sure he's the kind of guy who when he's fighting someone like Adrian Broner, he's looking at Broner and he's thinking, you know, this guy has a family. <laughs> you know, this guy has kids. I can't take him out. I believe it's only because Manny Pacquiao is a compassionate person that I'm just going to call this fight for Manny Pacquiao without saying the words, by stoppage, right? Let's be blunt on Adrian Broner. First, let me say this. In team sports, people on your team can check you. You got guys like Draymond Green, and I'm a big Draymond Green fan. By the way, in that Golden State dust-up, I'm on Team Draymond. Right? You got guys like Draymond Green who'll tell a dude who's a little bit too full of himself. Hey, man, don't be a blank. You know, hey, you're really going to act this way. You're really going to be buffoonish. Right? We won without you. Well, in boxing, you don't really have that. Right? Who's going to say that to Adrian Broner? The guy carrying his golf clubs? Right? Understand, people want to sign Adrian Broner. Right? Eddie Hearn was saying, hey, we'll give you millions of dollars to sign with us. Right? Boxing, you don't have the teammate who can get in your face and call you out. You just don't. Right? Some guys are that way. Freddie Roach was a little bit tough with Manny. Uh, Freddie Roach is now working Tyson Fury's corner, right? The boxer is king in boxing. I'm not saying it should be any different.
But I don't think Adrian Broner is remotely aware of how much his skills have eroded. Let me say this. I'm sure if you look up Broner's history, you're going to see that Broner got a draw with Jesse Vargas. Hey, that wasn't a draw in the Dwyer household. I thought that was a clear cut. Let me repeat that. I thought that was a clear cut win by Jesse Vargas. You know, people come up to me and they are upset that Marvin Hagler's body punches against Ray Leonard weren't reflected in the scoring of that classic fight. Folks, look at the Jesse Vargas body attack on Adrian Broner. It's even worse than that. After Vargas clearly won that fight, clearly, right? I mean, he's landing repeatedly to Adrian Broner's body. After he clearly won that fight, after the judges made it yet another boxing travesty, scoring-wise, and called it a draw. The next day, you want to know what was all over the net? That Adrian Broner, who is charismatic in the ring, who makes facial expressions, who eggs you on even as you're ripping apart his ribcage. Right? The way that fight was reported was we heard that Adrian Broner looked the best he'd looked in a while. Now, first, let me say that's not too hard, right? Because he didn't look that great against Adrian Granados when he won by split decision, and he looked downright awful against Mikey Garcia, trying to fight that fight on his back foot. Right? But understand, Adrian Broner hasn't been Adrian Broner now for a while. Right? You have a myth. You have a marketing campaign in the ring against one of the dominant fighters of our time, Manny Pacquiao. Right? Let's talk styles, too. You know, Adrian Broner, and I know he's, tra he's changed trainers and stuff like that, but Adrian Broner always had his feet too wide apart, didn't he? He was never quite as mobile as he should have been. His game was always a game of chess in the pocket. Wasn't it? He's great defensively. I'll always give him that. But he was a guy who wanted to kind of outthink you. Outstrategize you. In the pocket. Well, the problem is Manny Pacquiao isn't tethered to the pocket. When you talk about great legs in the history of the sport, Manny Pacquiao has to be mentioned. Even now, in his late 30s, Manny Pacquiao has some of the best legs in the sport of boxing. You know, the term freak athlete comes to mind. Understand, there aren't that many out there. Right? You know, Barry Sanders, Deion Sanders, Michael Jordan. You know, you don't really have Randy Moss. You don't really have that many guys who are just physically blessed with quick reflexes, with an ability to jump around, right? If Deontay Wilder was up on his toes and was able to bounce around the ring, wasn't a flat-footed fighter, and was able to jump in the pocket in the blink of an eye and get off his huge straight right hand, right? Then he would be the right-handed version of Manny Pacquiao. Understand Pacquiao has Deontay Wilder level punching power. He's a southpaw, it's a straight left. But Pacquiao also brings legs that even an unbeaten heavyweight champion like Deontay Wilder can't match. Right? Pacquiao is a unique skill set. Unique. Now, let me just say, I think people watched <clears throat> an outlier fight. A fight that took place in Pacquiao's opponent's backyard. Right? A fight where the referee 
gives his opponent a chance, right? The ref goes over to his opponent's corner and tells Jeff Horn, look, you got to show me something this round or I'm going to stop the fight, right? Now, let's just say the judges at the end of that fight easily could have awarded that fight to Manny Pacquiao. I'll agree. The fight's competitive. I don't consider Jeff Horn's victory over Manny Pacquiao to be you know, a robbery, like I do the Vargas Adrian Broner fight, right? But understand, people saw that fight, and Jeff Horn is much more aggressive than Adrian Broner. People saw that fight, and then jumped to the wrong conclusion, that it was over for Manny Pacquiao, that somehow they had a shot against Manny Pacquiao, if they could just bully Manny Pacquiao. How did that work out for Lucas Matisse? Folks, pa I don't even think it would work out for Jeff Horn in a rematch. Understand, Manny is dangerous. He's still explosive. He has the better legs than Broner. He has the better power from Broner. His power isn't the same as Broner's. Broner can hit you hard when you're in the pocket. By contrast, Manny Pacquiao can hit you hard when he's outside of the pocket. It's a mistake. It's a mistake to think that Broner could suddenly pull a Jeff Horn, right? Horn, hyper-aggressive, awkward, very heavy right hand. Right? The referee, let's face it too, allowed a lot of pushing and shoving in that Manny Pacquiao-Jeff Horn fight that a ref might not allow in other fights, including a Horn-Manny Pacquiao rematch. Let's talk about another outlier series of fights Manny Pacquiao had. People need to understand that one man, well, Marquez is a future Hall of Famer. He's a technician's technician. You see him in fights, the Mike Alvarado fight, right? Where he's out thinking opponents. He's using strategy to beat opponents. He fought Baby Bull. He figures out in the middle of the fight that, hey, uppercuts can work. Then he starts throwing uppercuts with both hands. In my opinion, it's a mistake for an Adrian Broner. And I know Broner's won titles in multiple weight classes. But for an Adrian Broner to think that he can duplicate what Marquez did against Manny Pacquiao, I think it's a mistake. Right? I think Broner's game's been deteriorating now for quite some time. I think Manny Pacquiao's game is still elite. I know we're going gaga over the reemergence at 147 of Keith Thurman, over Mikey Garcia's entry in the division, over Terence Crawford's dominance extending to the welterweight division. No doubt a lot's happening at welterweight. I've said here for years that I think Manny Pacquiao's athleticism would give him an edge over Terrence Crawford. Right? Understand today. Not in the Floyd Mayweather era. Not in the El Terrible era. Not going way back. I'm talking about today. Right now. Forget everything Manny Pacquiao has done in the past. Today right now. Pacquiao is still a major force to be reckoned with at 147. Right? People here online know I think I think Mikey Garcia beats Errol Spence. Folks, I also feel that Manny Pacquiao beats Errol Spence. Right? Simply too fast. Too sudden. Moves too well. Right? Look at the Lucas Matisse fight. 
Understand Matisse, tough guy. Huge punch. Bigger punch than Adrian Broner. Right? What I want people to do, tough, very tough guy. Matisse is a guy who fought a lot of people. Look at his interview after the fight. They said, what went wrong for you in this fight? And Matisse, big time slugger, a guy who intimidates other people, simply responded by saying, Manny Pacquiao. Right? Pacquiao was too fast for him. You're, you're dealing with the same kind of opponent here. Broner is tethered to the pocket. I know in the Mikey Garcia fight, he was on his back foot moving around the pocket. The problem is that's a foreign game for him. He doesn't know what to do on his back foot. I'm sure Mikey Garcia got tired just chasing him. Garcia was winning round after round after round. Right? Broner on his back foot doesn't have the level of competitiveness to be competitive with a Mikey Garcia or a Manny Pacquiao. Right? If Broner tries to come on his front foot, he's not the football linebacker type guy that Jeff Horn is. He's not going to come in and try to tackle Manny Pacquiao. And he doesn't have Horn's power. Right? Horn's right hand is lethal. Right? Look at the Ali Funeka fight. Right? Randall Bailey quits against him. Right, so here, I believe Manny Pacquiao is going to have easy pickings. In other words, Pacquiao is going to be outside. I don't believe Broner has the foot speed to find him. Right, I think Broner is going to be inviting him to come in the pocket so they could trade. That's Broner's game. But why does Manny Pacquiao have to be in the pocket? Can't Pacquiao just circle you? I mean, isn't that the problem when you're fighting a guy with great movement and great legs? He doesn't have to sit down at the table to eat with you. It's fast break boxing. So he's going to be outside. He's going to be fainting. He's going to be fainting. Broner is going to find out quickly that Pacquiao has the better reflexes. The better hand speed, the better foot speed, the better overall athleticism. When a guy hits as hard as Manny Pacquiao, you need to respond to the feints. Because if it's a real punch, it's going to take you out just like that. You're going to get hit and find yourself on the canvas like Chris Algieri did. And Pacquiao has the presence of mind not to linger in the pocket. You want to talk about angles, look at that Matisse fight. He hurts Matisse, then he bounces. Right? Pacquiao has lateral movement. So I'm surprised people think this fight is even competitive. Right? I don't. I think Manny's just too fast. I think Manny's just too sudden. I'll be surprised. If Broner doesn't hit the canvas in the fight at least once. Right? I expect Manny Pacquiao to win this fight. That's the way I'm playing it, folks. I just don't see a scenario where Broner outboxes him and is competitive on the scorecard. I don't care where the fight's held. Right? I don't see where Broner can be competitive on the scorecard. Right? Broner needs a KO to win the fight. Good luck catching Manny. I agree. It's happened. Juan Manuel Marquez. It took Marquez a few fights to figure it out. Right? Let's be real. Manny Pacquiao has great head movement, doesn't he? Manny Pacquiao has some of the best feints in the sport of boxing. This is a guy who is a clear-cut first ballot Hall of Famer, right? He's still a freak athlete. He hasn't reached a part of his career where his athleticism is betraying him. 
He's just too much of an athlete, in my opinion, for Adrian Broner. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Right? If you feel I'm not giving Broner enough respect, if you feel that Broner is still in his prime and is in the middle of his own Hall of Fame career, and Broner has quite an extensive and excellent resume of his own, championships in multiple divisions and things like that, if you feel that Broner was the one who was robbed against Jesse Vargas in the fight they ruled a draw, right? Leave all of that in the comment section of this video. However, just know where I stand on this. I don't think the fight's competitive. I think it's an easy payday for Manny Pacquiao. Right? I'm expecting that to be obvious two rounds into the fight, just like it was obvious when Pacquiao fought Lucas Matisse. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks, of course, for stopping by.